Uh, as if things aren't going poorly enough for me. One sec. Uh, so, for those of you who know me, I have a headset that is absolutely fantastic and comfortable and wonderful, but once every while, it doesn't like to work. So I have to turn it off for a few seconds. Um, you guys should still be able to hear sound, I believe. If there's any issues in the chat, please let me know. Uh, I have to turn it off for about a minute for myself, so I'm going to be playing this game a little bit deaf. Um, but all right, here we go, another best of three, the second best of three here in the Star Wars Labyrinth Cup Season 2. Now guys, don't worry, your favorite players, uh, there is a loser's bracket for them here today, so maybe uh, Dirty Bag got knocked out in game number one, maybe he didn't play as well as we had hoped, but he is still in the tournament, can come back to win it later on perhaps. For now though, spawning the bottom left corner of the map, the man we just uh, witnessed pull victory, it is the, whoa, whoa, this time spawning Terran, blue player Moxie. I'll discuss this race thing in a second. This is put on the top left corner of the map. RSVP. Uh, this was one of the guys to make it to the Starboy Invitational when it first came out. He's had some pretty strong plays since then, and overall, not a bad player. Uh, but I, I don't know which race Moxie's main race is. Uh, there's a lot of race switching that happens in Starbo, guys, because a lot of these players hate mirror matchups. Now, I, it's weird, in StarCraft 2, I also hate mirror matchups, but in Star Bow, we get so few of them, I actually would love to see more, but um, Moxie, perhaps, initially Terran, maybe he didn't want to play TVT in the first series, or maybe he's actually Protoss and didn't want to play PvP in this series. Uh, either way, he is playing Terran now, and the rules for this, by the way, guys, are you can swap races between series, but not between games, I believe, if that's incorrect, uh, StarCraft, SC2 is for Star Bow, will uh, correct us in chat, but... Um, yeah, so uh, we're going to see some Terran out of Moxie, which is kind of interesting. Maybe he'll play it a different way. There's some discussion in chat, too, about how Ghosts are supposed to be making Bio better versus Protoss, but uh, I, I know the Ghost has been tweaked with and changed. They've actually changed a lot about it. One of the coolest things I think they changed uh, back in Season 1 uh, was the nuke time, taking significantly less time to actually detonate. It doesn't do as much crazy damage as it once did, but uh, still cool to see nukes nonetheless. However, uh, Mech was so prominent, it was so dominant, it was so strong in Season 1, I can't imagine a lot of players would shy away from it. It's kind of funny though, because uh, I don't know if RCP is going to be the guy who changes his style, I guess, to match that of Moxie's. Moxie had a pretty good Protoss versus Terran style. Uh, from what I remember from RCP, he was really good with his Sentinel usage. We saw a lot more air uh, coming out of him than, say, anything else. This poor RCP is going to die. First blood! Yeah! Anyways, I want to stress this for those who are tuning in, who are watching this anew for the first time. Hey, this game is free to play. You do not need to own HOTS. You do not need to own StarCraft 2. You can play this with a free account from Blizzard, and you do this all through the StarCraft 2 arcade. It's available on all servers now, I believe, unless Korea is still behind, and if it is, then Xephius, what are you doing? Um, but it's interesting. This is the dynamic of a game that's quite, quite different. Uh, as you guys will see, that Marine took no damage. That's what I was talking about that first game. Uh, we cast today where there's a high ground advantage half a chance to miss when shooting uphill So you got to be a little bit careful with this ramp But yeah, I, I love the fact that it's free to play. We don't have enough people playing this game There's a lot of players who watch StarCraft 2 and there's a lot of friends I know who don't want to buy it just because it costs like 40 bucks But uh, Starbo, totally free guys, so have at her. Maybe get involved with the ladder cup. Maybe we'll see you in season 3 as uh, what is interesting about these cups are they require you to have a certain amount of games played and I'm not sure if it's a rank or not but uh, you have to have played Starbo basically. You can't just pick up and play the Starbo ladder cups. There's a prize pool for this season too, I think of $400, I'm sure that's probably going to try and grow a little bit before the end of the season but uh, some pretty nice stuff going on in that regard. Anyways, focusing more on the game at hand, we got the command center finishing up here in a moment for Moxie. Once more, you can play this game off of one base for quite a long time. You don't have to get that natural base up. You don't have to take a third and a fourth as badly as you do in StarCraft 2. Uh, but in Starbow, again, things are different, minerals are changed, and I guess we didn't really talk about it earlier, but to bring it up during some of the dead time now, uh, it, the assimilator, you'll notice there's only one of them per base. That's because you mine significantly more. In context, it's almost like a gold base in terms of gas. Oh, Siege Tank's starting to poke out a little bit, though. Uh, these are such effectively strong units against your goons. Not only do they have the range to deal with them, but as you see, they hit really hard. Siege Tank's twice the cooldown, twice the damage. Ah, uh, but we do have the Starport on the way. A little bit curious about this. Uh, we didn't really see much Starport, well, any Starport usage out of our last uh, series, but uh, probably just for medevacs, or not medevacs, or dropships, if I had to imagine. I mean, obviously, Science Vessels are really good, but they're more of a late game unit. You don't necessarily rush out. 
Oh wow, he's actually gonna go for the Viking right off the bat. This is kind of a curious choice. I guess this will give you coverage against most generic, like... You don't really see shuttles so much, but they are important because war prisms... Uh, well, I mean, they're war prisms, but the warp in effect, rather, doesn't get researched. Again, for those who don't know why you see uh, no no warp gate research here on the server next floor, A, it's like a tier 3 upgrade, but B, it it's almost bad to do. It takes so long for units to arm once warped in, and the cooldown on warping something in is way longer than actually building the unit. So if you just chrono boost something out of a gateway, it's way more effective, because chrono boost, for those who don't know, same with overcharge, it affects barracks and gateways differently than factories and, and tech labs, or sorry, uh, robot facilities, where units out of these uh, barracks, units out of the gateways, they actually get built at 100% additional speed instead of 50%, which I think, yeah. You made the tool just stop at the log, sorry, one sec. <coughs> ah. Anyway, third base being taken in. Hopefully my headsets are gonna work soon. Nope. Okay, nope. I'm stretching them on, still no good. Ah, I wish I knew what caused this. Anyways, face shielding coming out once again, so uh, this is an upgrade I assume must be now working properly for the observers. This is the tool tip for this one, I'm really, really, really curious. Actually, scanning four observers, Moxie uh, does not have the eye of the tiger, cannot quite spot that. Vikings, by the way, I want to give a huge props. Like, Vikings don't have a lot of differences to them, but uh, I love their attack animation in Starbo. It's just a slight difference, but it looks way cooler, in my opinion. And it's for going spider mines, but instead going for the Iron Thrusters first. We do see Moxie prioritizing a lot more siege tanks. Unlike our previous Terran player, Dirty Bag, we see a lot more vultures. So kind of a role reversal in this regard, but uh, this will work out fine. He's got siege mode, he's got some siege tanks, he's... Oh my god, this is so many here. Gotta fix the headset. I hate playing this game with no sound! There guys. Uh, middle of the map, barreling down here with a lot of siege tanks. There we go, now I got my sound back. Oh, do I have music on? I do. Okay, never mind. I'm. I can't. I can't deal, guys. I just can't. I just can't. But there's the warp prism coming up now. This is something I would have liked to have seen a little bit in the last series, but it was unnecessary, so that's why I didn't bring it up. But uh, one of the big things is with our Terran player Dirty Bag previous to this having no anti-air, there's no way to stop the warp prisms from really just dropping directly on top of the tanks. Quite frankly, you know that splash damage is a hell of a thing. Uh, if you guys missed it, in, in the Starbo Invitational, there was a series of Ryung versus Innovation. Now, TVT already is pretty cool, there's going to be a lot of siege tanks, but what we got to witness was a lot of, like, SCVs being dropped on top of siege tanks. Friendly fire's a hell of a thing, and that's not going to be any different here. Uh, this is the Viking, shooting away at that warp prison, do it again. My head's just bad news. Uh, <laughs> pushing here on the left side with the Marines with the Vultures, uh, but most of the siege tanks are cleared out thanks to that warp prison, thanks to the Zealot drops. I don't know that this third base is going to die, it will probably stand to see another day, but RSVP is not going to be able to make much use of it for quite a bit of time. Uh, still a couple good siege tanks in a really nice position, but without those spider mines, it's so hard to zone out Protoss ground forces. Uh, one of the big things, of course, for Moxie is he's starting to kind of come to a clock on this campaign. Um, this base is still slowly going down, emphasis here on slowly. But he finally has spider mines up and he starts changing it all around. So no longer on the timer to get out. He can actually continue pushing forward. The last couple of siege tanks are gonna go down into the zealots, but uh, with the spider mine setup, again, our people can't really push this one lone siege tank that is uh, shelling away at this nexus. Oh Moxie, don't lag out, man. Don't lag out.